impression of this um, is it I think it's a little out of the norm for Matt's typical work it's not as conceptual as most of his murals are and and so that's why I find the most interesting about it is that it's it's just sort of a, a step out from what he would normally create I think sure absolutely well it's definitely got his like vibrant style I think it his style is very like recognizable. So this definitely like screams graphic to me when sure. I look at it. But one of the things that I like about this one in particular is the composition. I like to see his work kind of do this um, and, and have this kind of um, tamed chaotic feel to it. It felt like he very much commanded the chaos he was working with. And oh, I really absolutely. like that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I tend to kind of geek out on a lot of the small intricacies, like now seeing the close up seeing the, the highlights and lowlights that he cut in, like to the chain and in the eyes like we were talking about. Um, I like that sort of stuff, all these lines that are cut in um, sort of towards the end. That's the kind of stuff that kind of my eye in. Well, and I think that even just these like shapes, kind of these directional lines with some of these geometric shapes kind of juxtaposed with maybe some of this more organic mm -hmm. um, shaping in here and shading with the color. I think that that's really, um, it makes it feel very whimsical to me somehow. Like it's very balanced because of kind of the mix of these different uh, textures and line styles. Totally. And, and I think that that juxtaposition is probably kind of the theme of this whole piece, right? Um, that's a really defining characteristic of this mural is that juxtaposition as well as the the surprising contrast that comes from such a wide color palette um, you would think that that would really like punch down the, the contrast of it but it actually really uh, emboldens it absolutely this particular mural here um, is one of the newer ones so this actually isn't even on our mural map quite yet um, for the Pueblo Arts Alliance. So I definitely wanted to feature this one because I think it's one of the newer additions. And so I love that it has kind of a fresh take on it because we're in a fresh time. That's right. Can't tell if you are busy or ignoring me. Can't tell if you are blind or you just cannot see. This time you got Alrighty, so this is the alternate side of that same uh, ringside barber shot, Matt Refik. Um, it's a very cohesive mural when you look at it kind of head on, but I actually really like this character a lot. Um, I love his like laser beam eyes. Uh, it makes me feel like this is a very powerful place. If I wanted a very powerful haircut, this is where I would come for it. This, this particular theme I think is like after Sandra's and, and my own hearts because uh, Sandra actually has a tattoo of a laser beam shooting cat and uh, my entire wardrobe is made out of cat hair. So this this really speaks to our, our sensibilities, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and I think that this side um, to me has like, again, it has that geometric patterning in it uh, mixed with this like very organic uh, shaping of like the serpent, um, some of the fire. And, um, it feels very much like a more um, kind of uh, representation of Pueblo. Like this yes. is a barbershop in Pueblo. Absolutely. And, and I think you can even see that maybe subconsciously in some of the uh, stylistic choices that, that Matt made. Um, so for instance, even in the fingers, how the shapes of the fingers are not necessarily like super realistic. They're really stylized, right? Um, they're kind of squared off and tapered and these big wedge shapes that reads really, really cleanly. And you understand that it's not meant to be uh, like a realistic depiction, but it's, it's really stylized. Again, with these lines cut in, um, these perfect cuts right here over his softest tones. The, those are the kind of details that I tend to notice first and that kind of sell me on the whole piece. Sure. 
Oh yeah, that attention to detail. I mean, you can even kind of see it in his fire. Mm -hmm. Something that I was really into was, you know, you have this kind of like space left with this background. Yeah. And as intentional or not as that was, um, it gives you that feel of kind of transparency. Like this is all kind of coming together and yet is, is not quite uh, existing on the same plane. Well, works in progress, aren't we all? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Here we are now at the Fake Beauty Supply. And this is a brand new mural, you guys, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Um, I don't know, this style to me is just so different from what we have in this town. It is, yeah, absolutely. Right, like, kind of like soft, um, very like pop arty mm -hmm. kinds of uh, vibe. Uh, these silhouettes kind of added to it. It's a very simple mural, but somehow it works so cohesively. Um, and I will say the, the color scheme on this mural is maybe one of my favorites in town. <laughs> yeah, you like this, this color palette, I don't do you? I do like the pastel-y <laughs> kind of uh, pink, purple, aqua. Oh, uh -huh. That touches my, that's the Lisa Frank kid in me. Sure. <laughs> this episode is called We Date Ourselves. But it is, it's, it's the graphic nature, the like bold graphic nature of this one stands out really, really strongly against uh, a lot of the other murals in town. And, and I don't know how many people who, who maybe aren't creators of like graphic art understand how deceptively hard something this graphic is to pull off because you see every single thing you see every edge you see every color field and so it's all got to be exactly right or it doesn't read sure. as what it's meant to be so yeah i think it's a really strong really bold mural with again like a lot of bold choices um that really really paid off and it's and it's just refreshing to see something that's uh, a little out, out of the norm for a Pueblo's mural. It, it is very technically difficult to do something this simple. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes people see murals like this and they feel like, oh, I could do that. Yes. It, it's not a lot of shading. It, I mean, you do have a lot of like variation to it, but it's, it's, a, it's blocky. And I actually find that, yeah, that's a much more unforgiving medium because you have to communicate the same types of shapes and feelings and uh, actions with less lines and kind of less uh, uh, commu uh, communicative uh, uh, functions. That Absolutely. Was, like, <laughs> and yes, yeah, stuff like this, you have to um, be able to sort of distill the information to its simplest terms, right? Yes. Um, and that is so difficult. I know that one of the exercises, uh, one of my coworkers, who's a really, really fantastic uh, illustrative artist, taught me was like, try, try to draw whatever you're trying to draw, if you're having difficulty, draw it as a silhouette first. If you can make it read as a silhouette of what it's supposed to be, you know, then the rest kind of falls into place. And it is so deceptively hard to do that. So when we see something like this, that it's entirely made out of essentially silhouetted shapes, um, and it's on such a large scale too, that's even just the logistics of sort of mapping and composing that are really challenging. Um, it's, I think it's a really impressive piece of work personally. Yeah, um, this narrative is like, uh, you know, obviously all about beauty and all about um, kind of staples of beauty, uh, like relaxation and other things that we think about when we're like pampering ourselves. But one of my favorite aspects of this is that we also have Edward Scissorhands yeah. up at the top, because to me, that pulls us into like multiple other murals in town. Which have, um, Here we go, folks. Here we go. <laughs> which have amazing celebrity uh, likenesses on their face. So happy that we only ended up with one Johnny Depp likeness <laughs> on this building. I cannot tell you. Uh, but no, seriously though, it is a, a nice little pop culture reference that I think really ties us together in some of our other murals in town as well as some of the other local businesses close by. We're really close by Independent Records. We're really close by um, some of the other like comic shops in town. So I think it's like kind of a nice little nod that, you know, we have this pop culture uh, reference kind of in a inconspicuous uh, space. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it does sort of beg the question though, doesn't it? Like, what is it with Pueblo and, and Johnny Depp? It, is there a thing? Is that a thing? Pueblo. Oh. <laughs> Why do you love Johnny Depp? I mean, so, there, there so are plenty much. of reasons, but like, what is our reason? Right, what is our collective <laughs> yeah. reason as a town? I do have a lot of questions. Um, and, and in all fairness though, um, you know, we do love his most iconic characters, That's right? That's true, yeah. Um, so y'all y'all know if you saw the first iteration, if you haven't seen the first iteration <laughs> of, of this series that we're doing here, please do go back and watch it uh, so that uh, you can see all of the other beautiful 
beautiful artwork and architecture that we've talked about uh, and also understand my great, uh, uh, what, sh what word shall we use here? Disdain. A disdain. <laughs> my great disdain <laughs> for uh, the multiple uh, occurrences of Johnny Depp's in certain other uh, works of art around this town. <laughs> Subtle. Um, if you're the artist that's that's creating this, I don't know if this is still in progress, uh, but if you're the artist that's working on this mural, I, I appeal to you, I implore you to please add at least one more Johnny Depp onto the mural, preferably the same character just again. <laughs> I might have a stroke. But the artist that did this is really cool. His name is Eric Saracino. And uh, he uh, does this really cool program called uh, Vandalism's Mural. Uh, and I think it's a really neat uh, little uh, uh, project that he has going on here in Pueblo. And uh, as I understand, a program like that would probably sort of uh, encourage maybe local businesses to work with artists in, within their community who might otherwise focus their artistic efforts on less uh, scrupulous endeavors, huh? And, and say, okay, let's sort of legitimize the, the stuff that you're creating and let's give you um, an outlet for that. And we get a, a, a beautiful mural out of it, a beautiful piece of artwork. You get to express yourself and sort of establish yourself and gain some experience as uh, a large scale artist. And yeah, I think that's a phenomenal uh, approach and a really, really brilliant idea, a really novel approach. Um, that we could apply to a lot of different social issues, I think, not just creative art and yeah. visual art. But yeah, when we, when we choose to sort of embrace our community and invest in our community rather than criminalize our community, uh, I think we, we tend to see a lot of progress and a lot of togetherness and, and which results in more community. Yeah. Which is never a bad thing. Phoenix Health Spa mural. Um, and I am so excited to talk about this one just because it's kind of my personal like style. Like this okay. is a little bit more like my personal taste. Um, just in how kind of like, it's not quite abstract and it's not quite like perfectly representational. Right. It's somewhere right in the middle. And I, that's kind of my jam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This one is a little, a little looser, especially contrasted to like what we saw at the state beauty supply. Mm -hmm. Um, and even some of the, some of the other murals around town that are more conceptual this one's a lot looser um yeah and there's there's definitely like a certain charm to that where i think we have to take in this piece as a whole yeah to really uh, appreciate it for what it is rather than sort of dissecting it or taking one little part as as a standalone piece of it or a standalone element yeah this you kind of have to see the whole thing and really any time that lettering is involved for me i i love it i love lettering that was my first love in art uh, so anytime people put lettering in, in their in their art pieces, I'm sold. I think what I like about this is that it reminds me of like an urban uh, expressionism, like a neo oh, yeah. expressionism, uh, because you do really have to kind of step back. You know, looking at it right here, this close to it, it feels fuzzy. Sure. And uh, like almost like I'm looking at it without my glasses on, which uh -huh. is another interesting experience. <laughs> but to step back and kind of realize things as a whole, I don't know. You know, impressionism is. Um, when we talk about impressiveness, uh, like in a historical context, they're really breaking free from the constraints of having to be representational. Um, and, and kind of like you said, it's somewhere in between uh, representational and abstract. It's somewhere kind of in between that mix. Um, and, and therefore it's, it's this kind of like liminal space where magic yes. can happen that I really, really appreciate. And so, yeah, this may not be um, the most technically proficient um, as we might talk about something like that is more representation or more mm -hmm. realism. But gosh, the feeling that I get from this, especially totally. with the vibrant colors, just really. Absolutely, and, and what I really appreciate about things that are, that are made in this fashion, in this approach, is that one, you can, you can almost feel the, the, the sense of accomplishment that the artist has from making it, mm -hmm. where the, the, the process and the end result were probably really, really satisfying for this artist. And then here up close, you can really see their process as well, which I think is, is a great tool for maybe younger artists, younger creators who are looking to maybe get started. And sometimes, uh, you know, a mural on this scale could be really daunting and overwhelming and you might not really know where to start. And then when you get really close up on a looser piece like this, you can sort of see, oh, okay, I think I understand maybe how they did some of this. Sure. And that's a that's a really useful tool. That's a really interesting way to look at that. Almost like it's a jumping off point for kind of these other techniques. That's really, really interesting. This piece is it's really just like raw and it's honest and 
it's like, hey, here it is. You know, this is exactly what I meant to do. And now here it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Gosh, love it. Love it. Agreed. All right, you guys. So coffee break. <laughs> uh, we're here at Gypsy Java. Um, and uh, we were taking a little breather and thinking about all of this really cool architecture. I think like architecture is definitely not like typical wheelhouse. Um, but I, I definitely can appreciate it. And especially this sort of aesthetic, which I would venture a, like a mildly educated guess that this would be like an art deco kind of theme in here, at least with the, the ceiling and the ornamentation there. And I really like how it's juxtap juxtaposed with uh, some kind of mid-century modern kind of retro uh, chrome fans. I like that a lot. Juxtaposition is not always my favorite thing, but when it's when it's bold enough to create some tension, then I really like it. When it's just chaos for chaos sake, I'm not usually into it, but this, uh, I think, creates a really nice aesthetic. And Art Deco is like, probably my second favorite Western modern art moment. Okay. Uh, second only to Art Deco. Perfect. Uh, and anybody who, who's gonna write a letter to the Arts Alliance saying that neither one of those are modern art movements, uh, do you have care of Sandra? <laughs> Absolutely, and, and it's one of those that I'm really glad we're covering, even just for my sake, because if you're anything like me, if someone asked you like, oh, where is uh, you know the, the two-part sculpture of the river, 
by Ken Williams Studios, I would have been clueless. Right. But we all know these sculptures, right? So I'm glad to, to kind of learn something about them myself today. Um, they're absolutely iconic and, and Pueblo staples. And I think it's it's one of those things that like shows the, the character that our city has that a lot of other cities our size kind of, kind of lack, you know? They may not have the, the creativity that, that Pueblo does. And that's such a defining trait for Pueblo that it, it really should be featured more often. And I wish we all knew a lot more about it, myself included. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we're out here today talking about this one because prior to this, I didn't really know anything about Ken Williams Studios. I only knew about Kenny Loggins. Williams Studio, uh, they've done a lot of like, they've been on children's museums and fire stations and like municipal buildings. And what I like about their style is that um, this kind of ceramic work um, is uh, really about creating space. Um, these are so monumental that it really has to be about the impression it gives. It's on a bridge, so people are seeing this for just a few You know, we have this, I guess, sort of mosaic around the base, right? Um, that's pretty representational of the of the, the river and the tide there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think, too, um, this is a pretty interesting one because, again, it, it's made by a Pueblo local. So what I see when I kind of look at these color schemes, and you and I'm looking at the one, for everybody who's watching at home, I'm like, why is Santa looking over there? <laughs> I'm looking at the second part over here. Um, and one of the things that, that really strikes me is, you know, uh, when you're looking at Pueblo, when you're on the highway and you're, you're kind of seeing this bird's eye view of Pueblo, that red brick is the color you see mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, and uh, to see this kind of sculpture uh, with all these like vibrant colors and shapes kind of exploding from that, I kind of see that uh, in an abstract way as Pueblo exploding with this creativity, okay. exploding with these unique colors and shapes and people and projects. Um, so I see it almost as like, yes, it's a representation of our, our uh, wonderful river that runs through our city that's iconic and our river walk, but also our city itself. Seeing more when you look out at that red and tan kind of brick uh, color scheme of our city and seeing the potential and the creativity. Maybe um, conceptual of, of like sort of the red earth and then the blue of the water, two of the, the main elements that Pueblo thrives on, you know? This, this city is still very connected to not only its waterways, but, but the earth itself. And, and what I really appreciate about, uh, you know, sculpture is that it's got to be um, not exactly utilitarian, but practical. It's got to have a practical effect too, right, as an installation piece. And just being here today uh, filming this, we see the, the dynamic of, of light and shade that, that plays off of these, these sculptures just by, by their placement. Sure. Um, which again, I'm sure was intentional, but I think is, is actually pretty ingenious. Look at the shadow kind of parading off of these spaces, right? It's almost like a separate piece depending on which part of the day you look right, at. Right, absolutely. Say what you want to, do what you want to do. Alrighty, so we're here at the Central Plaza Revival Project, the CPR, for all you cool cats and kittens out there. I love that. <laughs> and uh, this is actually, um, I think, one of my favorite like places in Pueblo to just chill. Um, you know, the, we've got the Arts Alliance right around the corner. We've got some amazing like galleries and working uh, places around here as well. And this place kind of feels like the hub of, of creativity. Um, I love this project and um, the like vibrant colors and just the feel of this little little park here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think it'd be unfair or unreasonable to say that that Central Plaza is almost, for me anyway, has always served as almost this gateway into the creative portal, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe like the art center would, would be like the official doorway into the, the, the creative spaces in Pueblo, but I think this plaza in particular really is like where everything starts right it's it's the jumping off point and then in almost any direction from here that you go you can experience the the, the local art scene sure yeah that's a really good point and like the the vibes just feel uh collaborative because you have maybe so many different types of artwork sure. represented here 
Um, and so I love that I love that you kind of see it as the gateway to the creative corridor because it is. It's like a gateway to this collaboration that I think we're trying to foster here yeah. in Pueblo, like specifically. Yeah, absolutely. And and sort of this is the first thing if you're if you're coming into town, I think, mm -hmm. uh, to see the, the the creative corridor. This really is. I mean, sort of that way. You got to you got to travel a bit to see the pockets uh, that are in that direction. Same with that way. But from here, it kind of tapers out into all of the areas that, that we cover in the creative corridor. Yeah. So yeah, this is really, I think, the, the opening for that. If you're ever, if you're ever feeling lonely in Pueblo, <laughs> you got a friend. You know, I love, I love how expressive these things are. Um, I feel like I know this person. Absolutely, you know? and look, we've even got some, uh, some artwork that's been put in artwork oh yeah yeah uh as as again like kind of a, a community project mm -hmm. um so this is still like a living growing place absolutely and i think that that's so beautiful because our community should continue to live and grow mm -hmm. and change and adapt and i feel like that's exactly what this plaza is uh representing for us is a living art piece that we are kind of all contributing to yeah totally and this is this is another one that's like so easily missed pretty often I think or, or overlooked or taken for granted mm -hmm. you know people just say oh yeah that you mean that weird little space in Central Plaza mm -hmm. and you, you maybe don't think of it as this living art installation but it sure. absolutely is and uh, again we, we how many times have we walked over these these colored you know tiles mm -hmm. in the park and not even notice and then when we stop and look at the piece as a whole we realize that oh everything in here is you know one small part one little microcosm of this macro art project. Well, and that's a good point too, because you have things that are small scale, right? Um, some of the little graffiti uh, or uh, uh, stencil tags mm -hmm. over here, they're very small, very, very inconspicuous. And then you have these huge right. gears on the ground. Um, and, and that makes it a really visually interesting place to be. Um, you, you know, you pointed out the, the, the contrast in scale of, of some of the elements here. And it's, I don't know, is it irony that like, yeah, maybe some of the stencils are so small that it's easy to miss them. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, some of this stuff is so large that it's easy to miss them. Sure, you absolutely. Know? The understatedness, like uh -huh. you just said, the understatedness of this. Uh, we tend to notice what's right in front of us, what's at our eye level. And I think what's neat here is that everything is away from the human eye level. If you're yeah. kind of like looking straight forward, you're going to miss almost everything sure. in this part. And yet somehow, if you just take a second to look around and look down, you realize you're surrounded by all these really intricately beautiful things. I mean, even to the point, and, and maybe this will be contestable by our <laughs> audience, but even to the point where I really appreciate that people continue to add like stickers to these boxes. I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to touch on those. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, well, tell us your thoughts on these. Yeah, so these are like obviously very, um, I don't know, it might not be exactly accurate, but I think in context, it would be fair to say that these are like organic parts uh, of this art installation, right? Um, that just sort of, they almost do occur naturally in spaces like this. Obviously people put them there, but they they just fit, right? They fit the scene so well that yeah, they really do become part of, uh, of the whole aesthetic. And it's a really interesting, I think it almost serves as like, um, like, like a cutaway, right? That we're surrounded by all these buildings, offices, bars, restaurants, that sort of thing. Uh, a bank over here and then we have this cutaway that almost serves to show like at its core this is what our town is about yes at our core this town is like just bursting with color and creativity and passion uh and, and community once again and i said it in our first episode and i'm going to say it in our second episode pueblo is one of the most punk rock towns absolutely and i I, I love the way you describe that. You know, it is kind of like this organic popping up of, you know, uh, almost like it's it's a garden. It's like this urban garden of sure, art that absolutely. we're continuing to, to foster. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I wonder if it's just sort of implicit in a space like this that feels creative for creative types to come and add to it freely. Yeah. Right? With, with slaps like this. Sure. Uh, they say, well, look, that's a perfect place to put it. Yeah. You know, without the, maybe the risk of, of putting it on a bank window, right? Sort of where, where we see a lot of graffiti executed. This is just kind of like, it belongs. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to uh, read, there's so many contributors, you guys, to this project. Um, the Central Plaza Revival Project, CPR, if you will. Um, 
really required a lot of people. And again, like we said, it's still ongoing. There are still many things that we want to do here, um, including several like memorial plaques, um, revamping some of the uh, colors here. So it's, it is again a living thing, but I'd like to kind of share with you guys some of the people that made this place possible. The main artists for uh, this central plaza are Anne Scott, Danielle Harwell, uh, Bob ben Benuvito, Ron Varela, Bonnie Wright, okay. Kim Fiella Fur, mm -hmm. Kathy Valen uh, Valencia. No, that's not how you say Valenzuela. that. Valenzuela. Kathy Valenzuela. Valenzuela. Um, so all of those were artists that contributed to this as well. And then we have this huge list, and I'm only going to read some of them. So <laughs> if you're watching this and you were one of the uh, uh, contributors or donators to this and I do not say your name I am so sorry I have a list of probably 45 people and I don't think you want the entire video to be me reading your name. Write so, an angry worded letter to the fellow Arts Alliance care of Sandra Burrier. <laughs> he, Joaquin really wants me to get hate mail I, in case you guys didn't know this is a very adversarial relationship. We need to give you know we need to funnel projects into the postal service they need that's true they need this send me two angry letters yes. for every complaint <laughs> so some of the organizations involved in this project were the colorado garden foundation colorado creative industries the pueblo urban renewal authority the pueblo arts alliance of course <laughs> city of pueblo rotary 43 comcast keep pueblo beautiful we have some individuals like mark willard and uh, also have uh, Julie Rodriguez, Target Stores, uh, Sherwin Williams. Uh, this, this list goes on and on and on and on, you guys. Really, really cool that so many people came forward to, to create this project. I think that anytime we see the community coming together for any reason, it's really amazing, but especially when it's something that I, I think arguably most people would say that uh, uh this project could have gone years uh sure. without being done and and maybe it would have been different uh maybe it wouldn't have maybe we would have all just lived our lives without it but to have this beautiful space and to know that so many people in pueblo care so much about creating beautiful safe and inclusive spaces for people mm -hmm. i love 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 that there are so many lip names that i can't read the entire list right and that's that's like evidence of, of actual progress yeah. that we're making in, in this community, in this town. Um, and, and again, because we're such a community-driven place, like you said, this is a really punk rock town. And I think we, we, we can take that to me like it's, it's a blue collar community driven by hard work, dedication, and togetherness. And uh, yeah, this is, this is proof positive of that. Absolutely. We're sitting in it. Love it. Absolutely, and, and I think, you know, 
aesthetically, it's one thing, uh, but for those of us who grew up here or have been here a long time, it's also pretty nostalgic because most, if not all, like not all of them, but certainly uh, most of these songs are from now defunct Pueblo businesses. Sure. Uh, you know, so looking around, it's, it's incredible how many of them I remember. Even though I'm not, I repeat, I'm not that old, I do remember a lot of these businesses uh, that I had otherwise forgotten about until I come to Beyond Alley. Sure, absolutely. And then uh, we had we briefly mentioned uh, on our way over here that they had held Scorpion Fest here one year. Were you here for that? I was not. Uh, what is Scorpion Fest? Scorpion Fest was, um, it was a really cool, really novel idea. Uh, a little street festival, real similar to, you know, uh, what we said, like, uh, was Wild West Fest, right? Okay. Um, it was like that, but the, the theme of it was this sort of Tijuana back alley. And so we came and they had, like, all these food vendors and, and bands and music and drinks, and then they had uh, a little, like, boxing ring set up with some luchadors oh. that were putting on uh, a luchador show wrestling. Um, and they really pulled off the, the vibe really, really well. Uh, just the fact that it was a nighttime festival and it was unapologetic about like, no, this is a sort of about like debauchery and partying and having a good time. Sure. You know, let's, let's not like, uh, let's not, not deny that. Right, right. And so because they embraced that, it had a completely different vibe from all the other street festivals. And they only did it the one time, but hopefully in the future we'll see it return. It was a really fun thing. Awesome. All right, audience, if you want to see Scorpion Fest return, you better put it down in the comments yep. so we can get on that because that sounds kind of amazing in my opinion. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. And they even had, they even had a, that was the first time I ever had a uh, holy cow. No way. Yep. Love holy cow. Oh Me my gosh. Too. Hey, you know, as somebody who came in kind of new, I like that it has so much history to it. Sure. So I can come in, like I wasn't here when we had um, some of these various signs mm -hmm. or various businesses signs belong to but it's cool to feel like this is a little bit more freeform than like going to a museum sure um because what would what would have happened to these if they had to come here right yeah. and so i love that um this can sort of act as like a more urban uh uh version of, of like the heritage museum which we're actually right across the street from the heritage museum is just one uh corner over from us so I kind of think that's really serendipitous that this sure. is almost like a spilling out of Pueblo heritage, um, but in a much more modern sense than maybe what they house at the, the museum. Well, and once again, we, we have this recurring theme that we've been talking about every, just about with every piece is that uh, that contrast and the juxtaposition, yeah. right? the tension created by the, the contrasting elements. Um, and then of course you've got like the, the cool like train memorabilia and you've got the phone booth and then you've got Mr. Tandoris and you've got all these restaurants and so yeah there is kind of like a mixing of different kinds of people oh, sure. uh, so that's also like cool to see everybody kind of coming together and like you said yeah there are people taking pictures and there are people just like starting their night out or so there are people ending their night out so this is kind of where it feels very like lively and like welcoming you know mm -hmm. and a super cute date idea just putting that up there that is a very good <laughs> point. Oh, I guess that's it. I guess that's all I have to say. I take it back. Alrighty, you guys. That's our day. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with us and checking out all these amazing, cool places in Pueblo. I had fun. Did you have fun? I had Mikey? a great time. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it again. Okay, sounds good. Well, check us out for our next episode. You know there will be more, and we'll see you guys next time. Much love. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. If you are busy or ignoring me, you can't tell. If you are blind or you just cannot see.